Let's talk about optimal posture. And the three most important areas of the body, levels of the body that we want to focus on is the pelvis area. And you can think of the pelvis as a bowl. And the bowl sits on the base of the spine. And we want the bowl to be relatively level. And so if the bowl tilts in a particular direction, this is posterior pelvic tilt, that my, let me <clears throat> tuck my shirt in here. So when I roll my pelvis up, the top of my pelvis is above the bottom of my pelvis. So if I was to draw a line like this, this would be the angle of the pelvis. And what you'll see is, is that this uh, forces me to round my upper spine. And this turns on my front muscles. So try this now. Tilt your pelvis so that the front waistband pulls up, the back waistband pulls down, and then muscle test the front muscles, muscle test the back muscles. And so what you'll see is there's front muscle engagement. So if you're walking around in this type of position all day long, most likely your front muscles are on and you'll see that my shoulders are rounded forward and that my head is forward at the center axis of the body. And so if I do the opposite, anterior pelvic tilt, I'm gonna tilt my front waistband and my hip points will roll down, and this will make my back waistband higher than the front waistband. And if you do a little muscle test, try this, you'll see that your back muscles are engaged here, front muscles are relaxed. Also in terms of the hips, the hips can move behind the midline of the body, and this is hip flexion, and what you'll see is that my um, torso has to be in front of the hips, and I can also have my hips forward, which will mean that I'll be leaning backwards. So what we want to find is a position where the pelvis is tilted um, neutrally, so it's level, and that it's in the midline of the body. And typically you can find this by moving a little bit forward and back on your feet and bring the focus to the weight within the feet. You'll notice when your pelvis is forward that the weight is on the front of the foot. When the pelvis is back, it's on the back of the foot. And so you want to find the position where the weight feels evenly balanced throughout the foot, relax your whole body, and then you can even play around with pelvic tilt a little bit, tilt forward, tilt down, and what we want to feel is these front and back muscles are relatively relaxed. So optimal posture from my perspective is when the body is in a really efficient position and it doesn't need to work very hard. So the next is going to be, the next level of the body is going to be the rib cage. And so the rib cage can tilt as well. So starting with the front of the rib cage, we can tilt the rib cage up and what you'll see there is that I'm going to lean my shoulders back like this, so I'll stand and walk like this. And if I tilt my rib cage down, then I'm going to be in this forward rounded position. So same thing here, when I tilt my rib cage in this position, my front muscles are engaged and my shoulders and head are in front of the body. And if I tilt in the opposite direction, my back muscles are engaged, my shoulders are behind, and it feels like I'm leaning backwards here. So again, uh, proprioceptively be aware of where the weight is in your feet and be aware of muscle chains that are active and turned on. So we want the front muscles to be relatively um, relaxed, the back muscles to be relatively relaxed, for our rib cage to be level, our pelvis level, and that they are stacked over one another. And then the third level of this, which is really common nowadays, is that the head is forward of the midline of the body. And if any one of these moves, the other one has to move too. So if I move my head forward, my hips have to move back. If I move my head back, then my hips have to move forward to rebalance the body. So again, the body will balance in poor postures. And that's why it's kind of hard to get out of poor postures if you're not quite sure what to look for. So here, we want to think of moving the chin back while keeping the eyes forward. And what you might find as you move your chin back is that your rib cage lifts a little bit, 
to draw the lowest rib down and then try to find a nice neutral posture. Relax the whole body and bring the weight to your feet and feel the feet nice and balanced. Feel the front muscles relax, back muscles relax. And then another way that you can check this is to sit against the wall. And so if you bring your back right against the wall, what we want to do is bring the head back in space with the chin down and the eyes forward. So tendency here is to bring the head back, lift the chin and look up. And so that's going to bring the neck into extension here. And what we want is for the head to be in a nice neutral position as we bring it back. The rib cage, we can do a little test here and move back and forth to feel the muscles engage. We can move from the hips and feel the muscles engage. So try this against the wall. Bring your back against the wall, bring your head against the wall with your chin down to the chest, eyes facing forward. And then move from the hips, move forward and back, and you'll feel the muscle chains engage. And then move from the rib cage, forward and back, and you'll feel the muscles engage. And then move the head against the wall with the chin down. So the next progression of this would then be to do this without the wall. So now we're just remembering this position. And I like this position as well as a test for our hip flexors. So we'll do a lot of mobility work on the floor. And what's typical is if your hip flexors fatigue, it's going to make your spine compensate in some way. And when we can't achieve this neutral position, this is going to affect your mobility training. So for a lot of us, we're in this position when we're forward folding, we can't actually get into our hips because our spine is compensated to take the work out of the hips. And this is actually a weakness. This isn't a limit in your flexibility. It's a weakness in the hips. So this is something that our mobility practice will retrain for you. But I want you to just have an awareness of the, of the body's posture that we're looking for in any type of neutral position, sitting or standing. So again, pelvis, neutral, rib cage, neutral, the rib cage directly over the pelvis, belly soft, lower back relaxed, and then the head back, chin facing down, eyes forward. And then your breathing will take care of the rest. So as you inhale, you'll breathe down into the pelvic floor and this will create an elongation through the crown of the head. This will create what's called intra-abdominal pressure that creates space and stability for the trunk. And all of this goes into you being able to hold your body in an efficient way that isn't taxing to your body, that isn't causing it added stress, or not allowing it to recover. So if we're in bad postures, we're creating stress in the body, and when the body is stressed, it can't fully recover. So recovery is such an incredibly important part of us being able to um, create more strength and more mobility. So you can only get as strong as you can recover. You can only change the body to the degree that you can recover from. So by setting yourself up with good posture and good breathing mechanics, you'll be able to recover quicker and you'll progress much faster.